Kannada, Kannada, Kannada Kane is a Dravidian language spoken predominantly by Kannada people in India, mainly in the state of Karnataka, and by significant linguistic minorities in the states of Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and abroad. The language has roughly 43.7 million native speakers, who are called Kannadigas Kannada is also spoken as a second and third language by over 12.9 million non Kannada speakers living in Karnataka, which adds up to 56.6 million speakers. It is one of the scheduled languages of India and the official and administrative language of the state of Karnataka. The Kannada language is written using the Kannada script, which evolved from the 5th century Kadamba script. Kannada is attested epigraphically for about one and a half millennia, and literary Old Kannada flourished in the 6th century Ganga dynasty and during the 9th century Rashtrakuta dynasty. Kannada has an unbroken literary history of over a thousand years. Kannada literature has been presented with eight Jnanapith awards, the most for any Dravidian language and the second highest for any Indian language, based on the recommendations of the Committee of Linguistic Experts, appointed by the Ministry of Culture, the Government of India designated Kannada a classical language of India. Kannada is considered to be one of the oldest living languages. In July 2011, a Centre for the Study of Classical Kannada was established as part of the Central Institute of Indian Languages at Mysore to facilitate research related to the language. <laughs> <laughs> development Kannada is a southern Dravidian language, and according to Dravidian scholar Sanford B. Stever, its history can be conventionally divided into three periods, Old Kannada from 450-1200 CE, Middle Kannada from 1200 to 1700, and Modern Kannada from 1700 to the present. Kannada is influenced to an appreciable extent by Sanskrit. Influences of other languages such as Prakrit and Pali can also be found in the Kannada language. The scholar Iravatham Mahadevan indicated that Kannada was already a language of rich oral tradition earlier than the 3rd century BCE, and based on the native Kannada words found in Prakrit inscriptions of that period, Kannada must have been spoken by a widespread and stable population. The scholar K. V. Narayana claims that many tribal languages which are now designated as Kannada dialects could be nearer to the earlier form of the language, with lesser influence from other languages. Sanskrit and Prakrit influence The sources of influence on literary Kannada grammar appear to be threefold, Panini's grammar, non-Paninian schools of Sanskrit grammar, particularly Katantra and Sakatayana schools, and Prakrit grammar. Literary Prakrit seems to have prevailed in Karnataka since ancient times. The vernacular Prakrit-speaking people may have come into contact with Kannada speakers, thus influencing their language, even before Kannada was used for administrative or liturgical purposes. Kannada phonetics, morphology, vocabulary, grammar and syntax show significant influence from these languages. Some naturalized tadbhava words of Prakrit origin in Kannada are, bana color derived from vana, huname full moon from punava. Examples of naturalized Sanskrit words in Kannada are, varna color, arasu king from rajan, pawarnima, and raya from raja king. .Like the other Dravidian languages Kannada also has borrowed tatsama words such as dina day, kopa anger, surya sun, mukha face, nimisa minute, and ana rice. History Early traces Parava Halegonada, this Kannada term literally translated means, previous form of Old Kannada, was the language of Banavasi in the early Common Era, the Satavahana, Chutu Satakarni and Kadamba periods and thus has a history of over 2,500 years. The Ashoka Rock Edict found at Brahmagiri dated to 230 BCE has been suggested to contain words in identifiable Kannada. According to Jain tradition, Brahmi, the daughter of Rishabhadeva, the first Tirthankara of Jainism, invented 18 alphabets, including Kannada, which points to the antiquity of the language. 
Supporting this tradition, an inscription of about the 9th century CE, containing specimens of different alphabets, mostly Dravidian, was discovered in a Jain temple in the Diogar fort. Greek dramatists Euripides (480–406 BCE) and Aristophanes (446–386 BCE) of the 5th–4th century BCE were purportedly familiar with the Kannada country and language, which can be concluded by the usage of Kannada words, phrases, and expressions in their Greek plays along with Persian and Punic. This would show a far more intimate contact of the Greeks with Kannada culture than with Indian culture elsewhere. The Kannada word orali lit it means in a village is said to be written on a huge wall constructed in Alexandria in the 4th century BCE as part of the remnants of 36,000 palm manuscripts that had been burnt in an accidental fire in Alexander's time. The Palm manuscripts contained texts written not only in Greek, Latin and Hebrew, but also in Sanskrit and Kannada. In some 3rd-1 stone century BCE Tamil inscriptions, words of Kannada influence such as Naliora, Kavudi and Pasil have been introduced. The use of the vowel a as an adjective is not prevalent in Tamil but its usage is available in Kannada. Kannada words such as Gudi Gavudi transform into Tamil's Kavudi for lack of the usage of Gosha Svana in Tamil. Hence the Kannada word gavudi becomes kavudi in Tamil. Pasil hosilu was introduced into Tamil from Kannada and colloquial Tamil uses this word as vile. In a 1st century CE Tamil inscription, there is a personal reference to ajaya, a word of Kannada origin. In a 3rd century CE Tamil inscription there is usage of apanapa viran. Here the honorific apa to a person's name is an influence from Kannada. Another word of Kannada origin is Taviru and is found in a 4th century CE Tamil inscription. S. Setter studied the Satanvasal inscription of 1st century CE as also the inscriptions at Tiruparamkanram, Atakala, and Nedanapati. The later inscriptions were studied in detail by Iravatham Mahadevan also. Mahadevan argues that the words Arumi, Kavudi, Pashal, and Tayir have their origin in Kannada because Tamil cognates are not available. Setter adds the words Nadu and Ilayar to this list. Mahadevan feels that some grammatical categories found in these inscriptions are also unique to Kannada rather than Tamil. Both these scholars attribute these influences to the movements and spread of Jainas in these regions. These inscriptions belong to the period between the 1st century BCE and 4th century CE. These are some examples that are proof of the influence of Kannada on Tamil before the Common Era and in the early centuries of the Common Era. In the 150 CE Prakrit book Gatha Saptashati, written by Hala Raja, Kannada words like tir or tir, meaning to be able, tuppa, petu, patu, pata, pitu, meaning to strike, pod, hod, have been used. On the Pallava Prakrit inscription of 250 CE of Higher Hadagali's Shivaskandavarman, the Kannada word kot transforms into kota. In the 350 CE Chandravali Prakrit inscription, words of Kannada origin like Punada, Punada have been used. In one more Prakrit inscription of 250 CE found in Malavali, Kannada towns like Vigoram Bagoru, Kundamuchamdi find a reference. Pliny the Elder CE was a naval and army commander in the early Roman Empire. He writes about pirates between Musiris and Nitrias Netravati River. He also mentions Barachi Barcelor. Nitrias of Pliny and Nitron of Ptolemy refer to the Netravati River as also the modern port city of Mangaluru, upon its mouth. Many of these are Kannada origin names of places and rivers of the Karnataka coast of 1st century CE. The Greek geographer Ptolemy 150 CE mentions places such as Badiamoyoi, Ind, Indi, Caligaris, Kalkari, Modogula, Mudigal, Petrigala, Patadakal, Hippocora, Huvina Hipparagi, Nagaroris, Nagor, Tabaso, Tavasi, Tirupangalita, Gadahinglai, Subuto or Sabatha, Savadi, Banawase, Banavasi, Tagoram, Tagara, Biathana. Pathan, Siramalaga, Mouthed, Aloe, Elipur, and Passage, Palisage, indicating prosperous trade between Egypt, Europe, and Karnataka. He also mentions Punada, Punada, and refers to barrels, i.e., the Vaidurya gems of that country. He mentions Malapala, Malp, a coastal town of Karnataka. In this work, Larika and Kandaloi are identified as Rastrika and Kuntala. Ptolemy writes in the midst of the false mouth and the Barrios, there is a city called Maganor. Mangalore. He mentions of inland centers of pirates called Oloikora Alavaheda. 
He mentions Aryaki Sadhanan meaning Aryaka Satakarni and Baithana as capital of Siro e p t Olmeos, i.e., Sri Pulamei clearly indicating his knowledge of the Satavahana kings. The word Pulamei means one with body of tiger in Kannada, which bears testimony to the possible Kannada origin of Satavahana kings. A possibly more definite reference to Kannada is found in the Charishan mime ascribed to the late 1st to early 2nd century CE. The farce, written by an unknown author, is concerned with a Greek lady named Charishan who has been stranded on the coast of a country bordering the Indian Ocean. The king of this region, and his countrymen, sometimes use their own language, and the sentences they speak could be interpreted as Kannada, including Kancha Madhu Patrak Haki, having poured a little wine into the cup separately, and Panam Bureti Kati Madhavam Ber Edavenu, having taken up the cup separately and having covered it, I shall take wine separately. The language employed in the papyrus indicates that the play is set in one of the numerous small ports on the western coast of India, between Karwar and Kanhangad, presently in Kerala. The character of the king in this farce refers to himself as the Nayaka of Malp Malpi Naik. B. A. Salator identifies the site of this play as Odabandeshwara or Vatabandeshwara ship vessel Ishwara or God, situated about a mile from Malp, which was a Shaivite centre originally surrounded by a forest with a small river passing through it. He rejects M. Govinda Pai's opinion that it must have occurred at Udyavara Odora in Greek, the capital of Alupas. Stavros J. Ciceritas mentions in his research work that Charitian is not an exclusively prose or verse text, but a mixed form. The corrupt lines indicate that the text found at Oxyrhynchus has been copied, meaning that the original was even earlier in date. Willemowitz and Andreassi say that for more precise dating of the original, some place the composition of the work as early as in the Hellenistic period 332 BCE, others at a later date, up to the early 2nd century CE. Epigraphy <inaudible> 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 The earliest examples of a full-length Kannada language stone inscription containing Brahmi characters with characteristics attributed to those of Proto-Kannada in Hale Kannada, lit Old Kannada script can be found in the Halmidi inscription, usually dated c. AD 450, indicating that Kannada had become an administrative language at that time. The Halmidi inscription provides invaluable information about the history and culture of Karnataka. The Kannada inscription excavated at the Pranaveshwara temple complex at Talagunda near Shiralakapa in Shikarapur Taluk of Shivamaga district, dated to 370 CE is said to be one of the earliest Kannada inscriptions replacing the Halmidi inscription of 450 CE. The 5th century Tamatekalu inscription of Chitradurga and the Chikamagaluru inscription of 500 AD are further examples. Recent reports indicate that the old Kannada Nishadi inscription discovered on the Chandragiri hill, Shravanabelagola, is older than Halmidi inscription by about 50 to 100 years and may belong to the period AD 350 to 400. The noted archaeologist and art historian S. Shedder is of the opinion that an inscription of the Western Ganga king Kangunavarma Madhava c. 350-370 found at Tagarthi in Shikaripura Taluk of Shimoga district is of 350 CE and is also older than the Halmidi inscription. Current estimates of the total number of existing epigraphs written in Kannada range from 25,000 by the scholar Sheldon Pollock to over 30,000 by the Amoresh data of the Sahitya Akademi. Prior to the Halmidi inscription, there is an abundance of inscriptions containing Kannada words, phrases and sentences, proving its antiquity. The 543 AD Badami cliff inscription of Palakeshi I is an example of a Sanskrit inscription in Old Kannada script. Kannada inscriptions are not only discovered in Karnataka but also quite commonly in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. Some inscriptions were also found in Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat. The northernmost Kannada inscription of the Rashtrakutas of 964 CE is the Jura record found near Jubalpur in present-day Madhya Pradesh, belonging to the reign of Krishna III. This indicates the spread of the influence of the language over the ages, especially during the rule of large Kannada empires. PYU sites of Myanmar yielded variety of Indian scripts including those written in a script especially 
archaic, most resembling the Kadamba Kannada speaking Kadambas of 4th century CE Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh form of common Kannada Telugu script from Andhra Pradesh, the earliest copper plates inscribed in Old Kannada script and language, dated to the early 8th century AD, are associated with Alupa King Aluvarasa II from Belmanu the Dakshina Kannada district, and display the double-crested fish, his royal emblem. The oldest well-preserved palm leaf manuscript in Old Kannada is that of Davala. It dates to around the 9th century and is preserved in the Jain Bandar, Mudbidri, Dakshina Kannada district. The manuscript contains 1478 leaves written using ink. <laughs> Coins Some early Kadamba dynasty coins bearing the Kannada inscription Vira and Skanda were found in Sitara Collectorate. A gold coin bearing three inscriptions of Shri and an abbreviated inscription of King Bhagaratha's name called Bhaji c. AD 390 in Old Kannada exists. A Kadamba copper coin dated to the 5th century AD with the inscription Srimanaragi in Kannada script was discovered in Banavasi, Uttara Kannada district. Coins with Kannada legends have been discovered spanning the rule of the Western Ganga dynasty, the Badami Shalukas, the Alupas, the Western Shalukas, the Rashtrakutas, the Hoysalas, the Vijayanagar Empire, the Kadamba dynasty of Banavasi, the Kaladi Nayakas and the Mysore Kingdom, the Badami Shalukya coins being a recent discovery. The coins of the Kadambas of Goa are unique in that they have alternate inscription of the king's name in Kannada and Devanagari in triplicate. A few coins of the Kadambas of Hangul are also available. Literature Old Kannada The oldest existing record of Kannada poetry in Tripadi meter is the Kap Arabata record of AD 700. Kavirajamarga by King Enripatunga Amogavarsha I is the earliest existing literary work in Kannada. It is a writing on literary criticism and poetics meant to standardize various written Kannada dialects used in literature in previous centuries. The book makes reference to Kannada works by early writers such as King Dervinida of the 6th century and Ravikirti, the author of the Ihole record of 636 AD. Since the earliest available Kannada work is one on grammar and a guide of sorts to unify existing variants of Kannada grammar and literary styles, it can be safely assumed that literature in Kannada must have started several centuries earlier. An early extant prose work, the Vidaradhan, Vidaradhan by Shivakoshacharya of AD 900 provides an elaborate description of the life of Bhadrabahu of Srivanabelagola. Kannada works from earlier centuries mentioned in the Kavirajamarga are not yet traced. Some ancient texts now considered extinct but referenced in later centuries are Prabrita AD 650 by Siamakundacharya, Chudamani Crest Jewel AD 650 by Srivaradadeva, also known as Tumbaloracharya, which is a work of 96,000 verse measures and a commentary on logic Tatwartha Mahashastra. Other sources date Chudamani to the 6th century or earlier. The Karnateshwara Katha, a eulogy for King Palakeshi II, is said to have belonged to the 7th century. The Gajastaka, a work on elephant management by King Shivamara II, belonged to the 8th century, and the Chandraprabha Purana by Sri Vijaya, a court poet of King Amogavarsha I, is ascribed to the early 9th century. Tamil Buddhist commentators of the 10th century AD in the commentary on Nemranatham, a Tamil grammatical work make references that show that Kannada literature must have flourished as early as the AD 4th century. Around the beginning of the 9th century, Old Kannada was spoken from Kaveri to Godavari. The Kannada spoken between the rivers Virada and Malaprabha was the pure well of Kannada undefiled. The late classical period gave birth to several genres of Kannada literature, with new forms of composition coming into use, including ragali, a form of blank verse, and meters like sangatya and chatpadi. The works of this period are based on Jain and Hindu principles. Two of the early writers of this period are Harihara and Raghavanka, trailblazers in their own right. Harihara established the Rigali form of composition while Raghavanka popularized the Shatpadi stanza meter. 
A famous Jaina writer of the same period is Jana, who expressed Jain religious teachings through his works. The Vachana Sahitya tradition of the 12th century is purely native and unique in world literature, and the sum of contributions by all sections of society. Vachanas were pithy poems on that period's social, religious, and economic conditions. More importantly, they held a mirror to the seed of social revolution, which caused a radical re examination of the ideas of caste, creed, and religion. Some of the important writers of Vachana literature include Basavanna, Allama Prabhu and Akka Mahadevi. Emperor Enripatunga Amogavarsha I of 850 CE recognized that the Sanskrit style of Kannada literature was Marji formal or written form of language and Desi folk or spoken form of language style was popular and made his people aware of the strength and beauty of their native language Kannada. In 1112 CE, Jain poet Nyasena of Malagunda, Darwad district, in his shampoo work Dharmamrita, Dharmamrita a book on morals, warns writers from mixing Kannada with Sanskrit by comparing it with mixing of clarified butter and oil. He has written it using very limited Sanskrit words which fit with idiomatic Kannada. In 1235 CE, Jain poet Andeya, wrote Kabagara Kava Kabagara Kava poet's defender, also called Sobagina Suji harvest of beauty or Madana Vijaya and Kavana Jela Cupid's conquest, a shampoo work in pure Kannada using only indigenous desia Kannada words and the derived form of Sanskrit words, Tadbhavas, without the admixture of Sanskrit words. He succeeded in his challenge and proved wrong those who had advocated that it was impossible to write a work in Kannada without using Sanskrit words. Andeya may be considered as a protector of Kannada poets who were ridiculed by Sanskrit advocates. Thus Kannada is the only Dravidian language which is not only capable of using only native Kannada words and grammar in its literature like Tamil, but also use Sanskrit grammar and vocabulary like Telugu, Malayalam, Tulu, etc. The shampoo style of literature of mixing poetry with prose owes its origins to the Kannada language which was later incorporated by poets into Sanskrit and other Indian languages. Middle Kannada. During the period between the 15th and 18th centuries, Hinduism had a great influence on Middle Kannada Nadugenada Nadugenada language and literature. Kumara Vyasa, who wrote the Karnata Bharata Kathamanjari, Karnata Bharata Kathamanjari was arguably the most influential Kannada writer of this period. His work, entirely composed in the native Bhamini Shatpadi hexa meter, is a sublime adaptation of the first ten books of the Mahabharata. During this period, the Sanskritic influence is present in most abstract, religious, scientific and rhetorical terms. During this period, several Hindi and Marathi words came into Kannada, chiefly relating to feudalism and militia. Hindu saints of the Vaishnava sect such as Kanakadasa, Paranduradasa, Naraharadurtha, Vyasatirtha, Sripadaraya, Vidirajadurtha, Vijaya Dasa, Jagannatha Dasa, Prasanna Venkatadasa produced devotional poems in this period. Kanakadasa's Ramadanya Charite Ramadanya Karite is a rare work, concerning with the issue of class struggle. This period saw the advent of Haridasa Sahitya lit dasa literature, which made rich contributions to bhakti literature and sowed the seeds of Carnatic music. Parandara Dasa is widely considered the father of Carnatic music. <laughs> Modern Kannada The Kannada works produced from the 19th century make a gradual transition and are classified as Hosagannada or modern Kannada. Most notable among the modernists was the poet Nandalike Mudana whose writing may be described as the dawn of modern Kannada, though generally, linguists treat Indira Bai or Sadharma Vijayavu by Gulvadi Venkata Raya as the first literary works in modern Kannada. The first modern movable type printing of Canaries appears to be the Canaris Grammar of Kerry printed at Srirampur in 1817, and the Bible in Canaris of John Hands in 1820. The first novel printed was John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, along with other texts including Canaris Proverbs, The History of Little Henry and His Bearer by Mary Martha Sherwood, Christian Gottlob Barth's Bible Stories and A Canaris Hymn Book. Modern Kannada in the 20th century has been influenced by many movements, notably Navadaya, Navya, Navyatara, Dalita and Bandaya. Contemporary Kannada literature has been highly successful in reaching people of all classes in society. 
Further, Kannada has produced a number of prolific and renowned poets and writers such as Kuvampu, Bendra, and V. K. Gokak. Works of Kannada literature have received eight Jnanpith awards, the highest number awarded to any Indian language. Topic areas of influence Besides being the official and administrative language of the state of Karnataka, Kannada language is present in other areas. Kannadigas form Tamil Nadu's third biggest linguistic group and add up to about 1.23 million, which is 2.2% of Tamil Nadu's total population. Kannadigas account for 3% of Mumbai's population of 12 million as of 1991, which is 360,000. As of 2001, there were 1.26 million Kannada speakers in Maharashtra, 1.3% of its population. Kannada is the third most spoken language in Hyderabad and is spoken by 677,245 people in Andhra Pradesh, some 0.8% of its total population. Kannada speakers in Kerala numbered 325,571 which is 1.2% of its population as of 2001. Goa has 7% Kannada speakers which accounts for 94,360 Kannadigas. There are 43 Kannadigas on the Lakshadweep Islands. Amindivi Islands were formerly a part of undivided Dakshina Kannada district. The Malayalam spoken by people of Lakshadweep has many Kannada words. New Delhi has approximately 11,027 Kannada speakers or less than 100,000 according to a different source. As on 2001, Gujarat had 15,202 Kannada speakers, Madhya Pradesh had 6,039, Rajasthan had 5,651, Punjab had 4,872, Jammu and Kashmir had 4,058, Assam had 2,666, Haryana had 2,115, Chhattisgarh had 2,084, Pondicherry had 1,177, Uttarakhand had 849, Dadra and Nagar Haveli had 728, Tripura had 640, Himachal Pradesh had 608, Arunachal Pradesh had 549, Chandigarh had 451, Nagaland had 398, Daman and Diu had 396, Andaman and Nicobar Islands had 321, Manipur had 239, Meghalaya had 232, Mizoram had 178 and Sikkim had 162. The states of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, Jharkhand and Odisha had not properly enumerated Kannada speakers in the census. There are about 150,000 Kannadigas in North America USA and Canada. Gulf countries of Middle East, UK and Australia have minority numbers of Kannada speakers. Dialects <inaudible> 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 There is also a considerable difference between the spoken and written forms of the language. Spoken Kannada tends to vary from region to region. The written form is more or less consistent throughout Karnataka. The ethnologue reports, "...about 20 dialects," of Kannada. Among them are Kundaganada spoken exclusively in Kundapura, Nadavar Kannada spoken by Nadavaru, Haviganada spoken mainly by Havyaka Brahmins, Arbashi spoken by Gauda community mainly in Madakiri and Sulia region of Dakshina Kannada, Malinadu Kannada Sakaleshpur, Korg, Shimoga, Chikmagalar, Sholaga, Gulbarga Kannada, Dharawad Kannada etc. All of these dialects are influenced by their regional and cultural background. The one million Komarpants in and around Goa speak their own dialect of Kannada, known as Halegannada. They are settled throughout Goa state, throughout Uttara Kannada district and Kanapur Taluk of Belagavi district, Karnataka. The Halaki Vakaligas of Uttara Kannada, Shimoga and Dakshina Kannada districts of Karnataka speak in their own dialect of Kannada called Halaki Kannada or Achiganada. Their population estimate is about 75,000. Ethnologue also classifies a group of four languages related to Kannada, which are, besides Kannada proper, Badaga, Holia, Kurumba, and Urali. Nasik district of Maharashtra has a distinct tribe called Hakkar Kanadi people who speak a Kannada Kanadi dialect with a lot of old Kannada words. Per Chidananda Murthy, they are the native people of Nasik from ancient times which shows that North Maharashtra's Nasik area had Kannada population 1,000 years ago. Kannada speakers formed 0.12% of Nasik district's population as per 1961 census, r. 
Narasimacharya considers Tulu, Kodava, Toda, Kota, Badaga, and Irula as Kannada dialects due to their closeness to Kannada. Status The director of the Central Institute of Indian Languages, Udaya Narayana Singh, submitted a report in 2006 to the Indian government arguing for Kannada to be made a classical language of India. In 2008 the Indian government announced that Kannada was to be designated as one of the classical languages of India. Writing system The language uses 49 phonemic letters, divided into three groups, Swaragalu vowels, 13 letters, Vyanjanagalu consonants, 34 letters, and Yogavahakagalu neither vowel nor consonant, two letters, Anisvara M and Visarga H. The character set is almost identical to that of other Indian languages. The Kannada script is almost perfectly phonetic, but for the sound of a half n which becomes a half m. The number of written symbols, however, is far more than the 49 characters in the alphabet, because different characters can be combined to form compound characters Each written symbol in the Kannada script corresponds with one syllable, as opposed to one phoneme in languages like English. The Kannada script is syllabic. <laughs> Dictionary Kannada Kannada Dictionary has existed in Kannada along with ancient works of Kannada grammar. The oldest available Kannada dictionary was composed by the poet Rana called Rana Kanda in 996 Ace. Other dictionaries are Abhidana Vastakosha Abhidana Vastakosa by Nagavarma 1045 Ace, Amarakoshada Tiku Amarakoshada Tiku by Vitala 1300, Abhinavabhidana Abhinavabhidana by Abhinava Mangaraja 1398 Ace and many more. A Kannada English dictionary consisting of more than 70,000 words was composed by Ferdinand Kittel, G. Venkatasubhaya edited the first modern Kannada Kannada Dictionary, a 9,000-page, eight-volume series published by the Kannada Sahitya Parishat. He also wrote a Kannada English Dictionary and a Klistapadakosa, Klistapadakosa a dictionary of difficult words. <laughs> Phonology Kannada has 34 consonants and 13 vowels. Topic Consonants Topic Vowels The open back vowels are phonetically central A A diaresis Topic Grammar The canonical word order of Kannada is SOV subject -object -verb, as is the case with Dravidian languages. Kannada is a highly inflected language with three genders masculine, feminine, and neuter or common and two numbers singular and plural. It is inflected for gender, number and tense, among other things. The most authoritative known book on Old Kannada grammar is Shabdamanidarpana by Kashiraja. The first available Kannada book, a treatise on poetics, rhetoric and basic grammar is the Kavirajamarga from 850 CE. The most influential account of Kannada grammar is Kashiraja's Shabdamanadarpana c. A.D. 1260. The earlier grammatical works include portions of Kavirajamarga a treatise on Alankara of the 9th century, and Kavyavalakana and Karnatakabhashabhushana both authored by Nagavarma II in the first half of the 12th century. Topic. Compound bases Compound bases, called samasa in Kannada, are a set of two or more words compounded together. There are several types of compound bases, based on the rules followed for compounding. The types of compound bases are samasas, tapurusha, karmadaraya, dvigu, bahuvrihi, anshi, divanva, kriya and gamaka samasa. Examples, tangali, hemara, kanzan. Topic. Pronouns 
In many ways the third-person pronouns are more like demonstratives than like the other pronouns. They are pluralized like nouns and whereas the first and second person pronouns have different ways to distinguish number. See also Kannada in computing Kannada dialects Kannada flag Bangalore Kannada Cinema of Karnataka Kannada radio channels Gokak agitation Timeline of Karnataka Karnataka literature List of Indian languages by total speakers Herman Mogaling Sirabhuvalaya Yakshagana Kuvampu Sahaya Lipyantara Kannada typing Notes <laughs>